Hello to Patters, this is Simon Maus. In the first episode of this overview on copyright, we looked into the perks copyright owners get. They say that if something seems too good to be true, then it isn't. And since copyright is very true, today we look into the limitations on those perks. These limitations on your monopoly on your creation protect public interest. They stop you from charging whatever you want for the use of your work. The first restriction is temporal. There is a time limit to the benefits you get as a copyright owner. In general, the Berne Convention stated that the length of the copyright is the life of the author plus 50 years. What? You wrote a song years ago. You die. Your estate still gets all the benefits of copyright for 50 years. After that, your song enters the public domain. That's the general time limit, but there are numerous exceptions. Most European countries have extended the copyright term to life of author plus 70 years. It's the same in the United States, but only for works published after 1978. As usual, if you want the specifics about your situation, talk to your lawyers. Compulsory licenses are another limitation. These are licenses people can automatically get from you, paying you a certain fee. For example, the government of the United States has decided that if I want to record a cover version of your song, I can, whether you like it or not. All I need to do is to hand you a check. How much are we talking about? In the States, we're looking at 9.1 cents or 1.75 cents per minute or fraction thereof, whichever is greatest per usage, of course. Example, I cover your six minute song and put my recording on my website to be downloaded for free. I owe you 1.75 times six equals 10 cents and a half per download. If my version is downloaded a thousand times, that's $105. But I gave my version away for free. Tough cookies, I still owe you. Nobody forced me to cover your song after all. In the EU instead, the fee is a percentage of a percentage of the whole record's published price to dealers, which is probably not the price you pay for that record. Compulsory licenses can usually only be obtained under certain conditions and for certain usages. I can't cover your song if you haven't released it to the public, nor can I pay you a set fee and use my recording in a film, nor can I change the song's fundamental character, and so on. Every country has its own set of rules that might or might not run along these lines. Did I say talk to your lawyers already? Finally, remember that compulsory license fees act as a price cap. If I can negotiate a better deal at a lower rate, more power to me. At some point during the 18th century, folks realized that a rigid application of copyright law was not good. It did not develop an environment where creativity could thrive. So, people decided it was okay to ignore the law in some cases. The doctrine of fair use was born. The idea is that creators can sometimes use copyrighted material without asking for permissions and without paying anything to the copyright holder. Again, the specific conditions depend on the laws of each country. Generally, I can use part of copyrighted material in a critique or review, in news reporting, or as an example to make a larger point. Notice that fair use is not another compulsory license. In fact, fair use is a line of defense I can pursue in court when you sue me for copyright infringement. I can honestly do my best to comply to fair use guidelines, but it is a judge who has the final word on the matter on a case-by-case -case basis. I need to show how the inclusion of the contested material in my work advances knowledge or helps the progress of art, whatever that means. I need to prove that the inclusion does not hurt your ability to monetize your work. If I fail, 
the copyright hellhounds will be on my trail. Notice that the quality of the sample I have used has no bearing on the decision of the court. I can't say it's fair use to sample your voice and put it in my production because it sounds like you talk from an old telephone. Notice also that I can monetize the material I produce through fair use. I can transcribe part of your solo and use it in my essay about your playing and then I can sell the essay to the public without you seeing a penny. Time to go. Stay tuned for the third installment of this overview to see how you can get your work copyrighted. Stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye bye. Simon Mas, music you love.